We have fire. I think they're... It's burning down pretty good now. Hello, welcome back to another episode from Pale Horse Survival and Tactical. I'm Bill. I'm glad you could join me. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a punk wood long match so you can travel with fire. Stay tuned. Welcome back to another episode from Pale Horse Survival and Tactical. I'm Bill. I'm glad you could join me. Today I'm going to make a pair of bushcraft pliers. Stay tuned. Hello, welcome back. You just uh, saw me cut a, a piece of deadfall and what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to clean it up a little bit and uh, I'm going to make a pair of uh, bushcraft uh, pliers today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by it's relatively straight. I'm going to go ahead and remove the bark. So we get down to the wood here and see what we're we're dealing with. Just going to clean it up. And these will basically act as a, when they're done, they'll act as a helping hand to, uh, to hold an item or an object while you uh, it'll hold it securely while you work on it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish uh, cleaning this up and uh, I'll be back in just a few. Stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. I uh, cleaned this piece up. That bark was pretty thick. This is a piece of fur and uh, the, uh, the bark was really thick on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to begin by tapering the two sides down to a point here, more or less. We're going to kind of square it off. So I'm going to go ahead and this will be the jaws of the pliers. down a little more here. I want both sides to be relatively even. Spin it around. Start working the other side.
this is what I have so far. I'm going to try and even it up. It's veering just a little bit to one side. Looking better. So I'm going to bring this end down to where it's probably about about a half an inch thick on the end here. Pretty close. I think we're probably pretty good here. That's not looking too bad. Just a nice bevel there. This will be the jaws. Now the tricky part is coming up. And that is splitting this. Let's get this off my hand here. Splitting this directly down the center here and hoping it doesn't doesn't wander on us. I could have split it beforehand and then tapered both sides. It would work that way too. But uh, I kind of like to have it, I kind of like to be able to machine the piece when it's a, when it's whole and that way it's easier to deal with and it's easier to kind of eyeball things so this is going to be the tricky part here if it veers off then our project is kind of ruined and I'll have to seek another piece If it veers a little in the back, that's not quite as bad. I um, can always do some uh, some shaping, but up here it's really critical. So the blade is positioned in the center. Giving it a double check here. All right, I'm just gonna start out easy by tapping it and I'm already seeing the split. You can see that split starting. So I'm just gonna take it slow and easy here. Make sure my blade is at 90 degrees. I'm actually Not quite 90, there we go. It's 
torquing the blade this way because it was actually tilting a bit to the back. And it's still tilting just a little, so I'm going to reposition it here. see that split so far not bad the other side is veered just a little so keeping the fingers crossed here Feared a little on the back side, but I think we'll be able to live with that. The jaws look really good. It's good even split up in the front. The back, yeah, it's wandered a little bit. It's not bad. The front looks really even. Let's take it home here. Not bad, not bad at all. Okay, so in the next phase in this, we do these pliers. Get my knife out of the way here. We do these pliers. We're gonna carve a fulcrum in here. We're going to bevel this on the inside. So we're going to go one third of the way back from the edge. One third of the way back to right about here. And we will begin to carve a very slight angle from the point where my finger is out to the back edge. And we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. So when these two pieces come together there's going to be a little raised area right here. A little fulcrum. And there'll be a gap back here. Not a big gap. Maybe a gap about like that. And when we rock this down on this fulcrum, the jaws will open. Actually, we want the jaws to open, oh, I figure probably about an inch in case we have a piece, an inch maximum to accommodate. Uh, an item of that size. Once we get that done, then we're going to move to the next phase and I'll show you how we're going to uh, use a uh, lever and fulcrum setup on this to tighten these jaws down and, uh, and hold an item securely. This will act as a third hand. Okay, so we're going to go back about, I'm thinking right at where this bevel begins. So we're back about a third. We want this longer area in the back here because this will provide leverage. And it'll, it'll all become clear here in a little bit as we progress on this uh, project. So what I'm going to do right now...
I'm going to mark right here where the edge, the bevel begins, down to the end of the jaws. I want to put witness marks on here. other side and just kind of trace a line across and begin your witness marks they don't have to be exact but you should have them pretty close So what a witness mark is, uh, for those who don't know, a witness mark is a mark that you put on two pieces that butt up against one another. And when you score them across both pieces, when you separate those pieces, you come back and you line those two, those two marks back up and you know you have everything in alignment. That's known as a witness mark. Okay. So we're going to go ahead from the witness mark. You can see the marks on both sides here and here. So they're pretty close. They're pretty close to one another here. Actually, no, they're not. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to bring this other mark back to here. Okay, so now they're pretty even. Whoops, not sure if I got that camera. So here's the one, here's the other, and then I'll do the same on this side. Yeah, they're off about a quarter of an inch, so. So I'll leave this side the same. This one I'm going to drop back a quarter. Okay, so now we're going to begin beveling this and we're going to take probably, start by taking about a quarter of an inch off of each side. I like the chop. It takes a... Uh, long job and tends to uh, shorten it considerably, which you have to be real careful. You can always take material off, but you cannot put it back on. You want to be careful. The key is to uh, take a little off at a time.
you can see the little little bit that we've taken off so far here. Heartwood's a little harder over on this side, so I'll concentrate on this side a little bit. This is softer over here. It seems to be coming off a lot easier, so I'll bring this down on this side. bit of a gap in here now so I'm gonna pop over to the other piece start working this one now just a little at a time Stop and see what we have here. It's just starting to get there. So far, we have about a oh, I don't know, quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch gap here in the front. I 
and that's pivoting off of that raised area here in the middle. We can also bevel off that slightly into the jaws. I don't want to thin the end of the jaws down too much though and weaken those. This will be a pretty beefy pair of pliers, so I want to keep it kind of kind of on the beefy side. This top one needs uh, needs to come down more, so I'm going to work on this one. Fur sure smells good. All right. Let's see what we have here. We have a pretty good gap going here. Still more to go though. We've only got about We need a lot more gap in the back here. So I'm going to bring, I'm going to work on this piece here. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera and uh, I'll pop back in a few times and, uh, and update you guys with the progress here. Stay tuned, I shall be back. This is what I have. I've uh, been working away on this. And I'm going to increase, I'm going to do some more carving on this. I want to increase this gap by probably another three-eighths of an inch on the back side. And that will allow this pivot, the jaws to open up further. I like the jaws to open up about a half an inch to accommodate larger pieces. So this is where I'm at right now, so I'm going to continue carving on the inside of these and increase this gap back here. And in doing so, I don't believe we need to taper the front. I want to leave those jaws as thick as they are right now for strength. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and work on this, and uh, then we'll move to the next phase. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm back. Been... Uh, chopping away on this, planing these two pieces down here and have a pretty good gap on it now. You can see how wide the jaws open. And that is the purpose of the fulcrum there in the middle, even that, that hump. So now uh, we're going to move to the next phase and uh, that phase is going to be uh, cutting a wedge that will uh, fit into this notch, a tapered wedge. And then after that we, uh, we have a few more steps and we'll have it complete and uh, do a demonstration. So let me go ahead and find a uh, a suitable piece for a wedge and uh, okay. shall we back. So I cut a uh, I cut a little wedge here and just beveled it down and that will go into the back here to 
produce pressure under the jaws here uh, to hold whatever uh, whatever is placed in here. But first, before we get to that point, we'll put this off to the side. I'm going to take my knife and with these witness marks here, something making a weird noise out here and I can't figure out what it is. I thought it was a squirrel cutting. That's a woodpecker. I'm not sure if you can hear that on camera. Yeah, I think it might be a woodpecker. It's not doing a standard fast ta 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 ta. It's kind of. They're woodpeckers. Um, I hear one over here. And there's one over here on the right. Interesting. Okay. Anyway, sorry about that. I've been hearing this noise for a little while, and it wasn't the standard tot 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 that you hear of a woodpecker. It's kind of a. Not sure if you can hear that on camera. It's a little slower and kind of intermittent. So I've got two of them one to my left and one to my right. Anyways, uh, back to the video here. I'm going to go ahead and score this. And from witness mark to uh, witness mark on both of these pieces, I'm going to score a little little divot on here. And what I'm going to use is uh, tree roots for cordage. Just use some simple push cuts here. And uh, that way there'll be a little furrow in here for the tree roots to sit down in and there'll be less app to, uh, to move. And you can use regular cordage for this too. I'm just going all natural with this, 100% natural here with this project so I decided to use tree root split tree root cordage on it. So I'm going to go ahead and work on these here. Get a groove in on both of these and uh, when I come back we'll go ahead and uh, and get these tied off with a cordage and give this a demonstration. Okay, I've got the grooves and these two pieces here and I just use push cuts for that. So what we're going to do now, I have uh, some root cordage here that I've had soaking in water. They were uh, previously dried out. You can harvest uh, you can harvest tree root cordage uh, ahead of time and debark it, split it, and roll it up and save it until you need it. And when you need it, just uh, soak it in water overnight and it will reconstitute and become soft again, pliable leave a tag sticking out here. So we're just going to wrap this tightly right on that notch. That uh, groove. And 
and I'm just going to terminate this with a uh, an overhand knot. Tree root cordage is amazingly tough. He's even here. And the notch will help to keep the cordage from slipping, migrating either to the front or the rear. And there is our bushcraft pliers. So to use these, place uh, something in the jaws. In this case, I'll just use this piece of wood here. And run the uh, well actually it's too thick now I can't get the uh, find something a little thinner here that we can demonstrate this with Actually, I'll probably have to, I'm going to machine this wedge down. I'm going to bring that wedge down uh, thinner. So the wedge will allow the jaws to accommodate uh, thicker pieces here. So let's just uh, give this an eyeball here. If we stick that in, it's actually pretty tight back here. I could always machine these down a little more to uh, provide for a, a wider gap back here. Yeah, let me go ahead and work this wedge down. Wedge is too thick. The wedge is fine if nothing was in the jaws, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and leave the camera roll. How about that? That way you guys can see what I'm doing here. little uh, custom fitting here towards the end. And when you do that, you want your wedge to be pretty even. In other words, you don't want a fat side and a skinny side. Because so when you drive the wedge in, it's going to tend to produce uneven pressure. 
on the two sides here. So you just stick it in the jaws, whatever it is that you're working on. And when you spread these apart, it produces pressure pivots off of the hump in there. Let me put my camera up here. Let's see what I'm doing. There we go. Bear with me guys. Okay, so we have our piece in the jaws. The wedge in here. And you just bring in your, uh, drive your wedge in, and there's the pliers, and that's in there, that's in there really tight. It's in there really, really tight. And that uh, will act as a, uh, a third hand. That's really, uh, really holding it in there nicely. And that, my friends, is bushcraft pliers. You can make smaller versions. Uh, you know, if you're carving something, uh, working with bone, making uh, fish hooks, uh, arrowheads, or whatever, and uh, you need something to, uh, to uh, hold it while you work on it, or maybe hold it while you're grinding on a stone, uh, this, will, uh, this will do the job. There you go. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did making it today. And uh, please like, subscribe, and share. I hope all of you are having an outstanding day or night, depending on where you're located. And I will see all of you very soon on the next one. Everybody take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, I just wanted to demonstrate here. I have a, an abrasive stone. Something like this. You can... It'll hold whatever you're working on and uh, kind of save your fingers and your hand. It works really well. Thought I'd share that. It's another uh, another use for it. See you guys.